close your eyes, be sensitive to the breath. You know when it's coming in, when it's going out. And adjust it so that it feels good. After all, it is the force of life. If it's tight and constricted, it's not going to be good for the body, not going to be good for the mind. Trying to find some joy in the fact that you can just sit here and breathe. At the moment, there's nothing else asked of you, except that you develop your own inner goodness. This is one of the reasons why we have this monastery, why there are monasteries all over the world, to make it easy for people to do good, provide the right circumstances, provide the right environment. We can be generous, virtuous, and train the mind. Because there's goodness like this that makes life worth living. If we're simply a matter of surviving for whatever, for the sake of surviving, life gets pretty miserable pretty fast. But if you survive for the sake of doing good, because then you have a good reason to keep on living. It gives you energy, it gives you strength. This is one of the reasons why in the time of the Buddha, when people would give donations of food, after the meal he would give a blessing. And the blessing was basically talking about the the merit those people had made, the goodness they had done. So they would rejoice in it. When you can rejoice in the goodness you've done, it becomes a lot easier to do it more and to develop it in higher and higher ways, especially toward the meditation. Because our real strength in life, the real force that keeps us going, is strength of mind. And so we need to meditate in order to develop qualities like conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. When you look at your mind and see that it has these qualities inside it, you should rejoice in that. There's that famous passage where the Buddha is teaching his son that if you look back on your actions and realize that you caused harm, you could, should be ashamed of that and you should make up your mind not to repeat that mistake. Go talk it over with someone who's more advanced on the path so you can get some good idea of how not to repeat the mistake. But if you look back on your actions and realize you haven't harmed anybody, You've done something that's been totally harmless, totally beneficial. He said, take joy in that. All too often we're embarrassed about our own goodness. We think that we shouldn't be thinking about it. We think that it gives us false pride. Well, it's, it's genuine pride. I mean, the kind of false pride is when they simply says, well, think of yourself as a rock star. Well, you can't even play a chord on the guitar. But if you look back and you see that you've been generous, you've been virtuous, you've meditated, rejoice in that fact, that you've made good use of your life. And that gives you the energy to keep on going, to create more goodness. And that's how you bless yourself. It's through your actions. We get blessings from the monks, and they bless us with wishes of long life, happiness, strength. But the real blessings come from inside. The goodness that you create through your own actions, that becomes a blessing. And that's in that way that you bless your own life and you bless the lives of people around you.